Hello, welcome to the home of Torpedo Plot. My name is Sharon Addison, and this is Daryl Addison. And he is the founder, the creator, the patent holder for Torpedo Plot. And we're happy that we can bring you this live video on Palm Sunday, this beautiful Palm Sunday. We wish you and your family a wonderful Palm Sunday weekend. And we just wanted to share some information with you about getting through uh, this situation, this pandemic, and trying to allow you an opportunity to have a food supply for yourself and your family and your loved ones. So we're going to do um, a little video. It's going to be like an interview, me interviewing um, Daryl. And I wanted to try to get some of your questions answered um, this afternoon. So can you, um, Daryl, tell us why we should want to partner with Torpedo Pie. Torpedo Pie, uh, first I want to thank you, Marshall, because you allowed us to create the video, which hopefully will trigger other businesses to step up to the plate and find out what services they can provide to their community. I think we're a pretty tight-knit community, and I think we all know each other. And, um, you know, just provide your service. Step up to the plate, and let's build that community that we want to build in these tough times. So, thank you. With that being said, to, to answer your question, Ms. Addison, torpedo pots are self-growing planters. So while you're at work, whatever, your, your vacation, they grow your food for you. So you don't have to sit here, watch your food, water it, fertilize it. You don't need to do any of that anymore. All you do is take your plant and put it in the planter. That saves you from tilling, from mowing, from hauling in different compost, from going in and weeding. Oh, we all hate weeding, right? And uh, then we have to do water systems that we have to build underneath the ground and stuff like that. So all that is money. Yes. And these pots are what, this one is what, $25? Mm -hmm. And it grows your food for you. It waters your food for you. It feeds your food for you. And how does Torpedo Pot uh, stand out above the rest, above the other self-watering planters? Yeah, you know, Sharon, I'm glad you mentioned it because we have a system that we put in place at your house. and. Even though other planters will have systems, this is our true advance to, to, to claim to fame, is that the pots aren't designed to grow plants. Because when, at the end result, you know, when we have plants at the table, that's what we're eating, we're eating plants. But the pots were designed to grow fungus. So when you're growing inside, within my hand, there's probably over millions of bacteria in my hand right now. And when I allow that bacteria to develop and the fungus to break down the food with only the right amount of water and not drowning your plants, and when you drown them, you wipe away the colony, Sharon. When you don't feed them with water, then you starve them and they have to rebuild themselves back up again. The right amount of water will get your personal person whatever that person wants. My next question is, how if I purchase a torpedo pot, how should I uh, use it most efficiently? How can I be a, a, a proper handler for this, your system? First of all, when you purchase a torpedo pot for $25, we keep it, we, our prices are, you won't, once we start advertising the planner, we realize once it gets out, they're gonna sell it very quickly, okay? So selling the planner is not so much the problem, but to answer your question, could you just repeat again, please? I wanted to know if I purchased a, to a torpedo pot, yeah. how can I be the best user of it yeah. that I could possibly Thank be? Thank you. Especially I'm sorry. Thank now you. where I need I yeah. need food and okay. I need good food for my family. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing you did when you purchased a torpedo pot is cut back your water bill. Those who are preparing for food in a backyard using now the space that they have, that space is now more critical than ever. You saved on efficiency because you can have more plants growing in one unit area than you can have put in the ground itself. And so you're saving on finances. You save the water. All right, you don't have any pumping systems with these other self-watering. We're not self-watering, we're self-growing. But with the self-watering, they have pumping systems also in place. And also, you know, so you don't have to bring all that stuff in, haul the dirt and all that stuff in. So it, you're sh proving efficient just by buying the planter itself. And then once it starts growing and, you know, delivering food, then you, you're, 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 you're eating healthy. You're losing weight. You have energy now. All these 
start to reverberate in your relationships and how we even worship the God. You know, I was in a prayer the other day, I don't want to cut it off, with a Black Farmers Association. And they said, Darren, will you start prayer off for me? And I said, I would be honored. It was, I was so honored, man. But when I started prayer off, that's what I said. Dear Lord, thank you for this. Well, I started prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the food that you've given us. Now, I want you to take a look at the food that you're eating and ask yourself, could it be better prepared for you than in your own hands? <coughs> I'm sorry, I've been struggling. Yeah. Good question. My, my last question <clears throat> for this video segment is once I purchase it right. and I start growing, what happens after the harvest? What do I do? I'm glad you said that. You, you've asked really good questions, thank you. But I want to change the way you think. So Peter Pond is a game changer. We realize with our patented technology, it's going to change everything. But I think what's going to happen is first of all, how we think. We're taught in terms of harvest. Yes. And, and that's what's so detrimental. Because we're taught to wait to the end to eat. And you're putting in all that investment money to want all that time and everything else, time from work to look over your plants, make sure the dog doesn't, you know, go to the bathroom on your plants. And so you're doing all this work and you're getting a harvest of it and hoping, you know, I'm thinking, Sharon, that's gonna turn out real fantastic. But a lot of times it doesn't happen that way. So let's rethink harvest again. And behind you, if you can see, these are our tall torpedoes. That's cilantro. That cilantro is gonna come out, I would assume about, maybe about a foot in diameter and I'll be eating off of it every year. And I'll be eating off it every year. The cilantro pots that we had, we had them for, I would say we're in our third year right now. And we just, it started to come back and we just got rid of it. So cilantro, cabbage, lettuce, uh, you, you name it, it grows everything. So I, did I answer your question? So, the, so after I get finished uh, something like cabbage, mm -hmm. And it put it well, not cabbage because cabbage pretty much we've ate, been able to keep cabbage all year, yes. yes but right. say something like um, green peppers. Ah, uh -uh, good point. When they all you know, because they yes. have an end, an end harvest, right? Right, and they stop growing when it gets uh, later in the summer, right, right? What do I then do with the pot after I have harvested, harvested all I can? Off of the pot? Yeah, um. <clears throat> You, the minute you see that your green peppers are about to expire, what I would do is start putting in your next crop. Okay, for, so for like the fall, because yes, that's, that's like right. the end of the summer, okay. Now you actually harvested, you don't mind me asking, you actually harvested, what you harvest, cucumbers, and what else did you cut up if you want? Uh, green pepper, carrot, cucumber. So how did you, how do you prepare those vegetables when you, when you store them away? Uh, the green pepper, I just cut them up and okay. put them into plastic bags and put okay. them in the refrigerator. Okay. Or I can cut them up and put them in the freezer. They freeze uh, well also. Oh wow. Same thing with carrots. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so I, for me, I shut down the pot. And from you, if you're going to get everything carried to the, the wintertime, like for instance, our collard greens and cabbage will go into the wintertime. Yes. And our... Some of our plants have survived the winter time. That's why in these pots over here, and I, I, I can't. How can you? You know, a lot of things do not die in the torpedo pot. They do live a long period of time, and it's true. Collard greens are a little sweeter um, earlier, not later. So we've had the collard greens. Let me tell you something. They are so delicious. Man, they're so awesome. They're very good. Yeah. So can I ask you a couple questions? Uh, sure. Okay. <clears throat> um, you, at our place now, now I would say currently we're growing about. Huh, I would say about maybe. 80 and above torpedo pots. I guess, yeah. Yeah, so I, I went on the extreme and, you know, I just said, hey, listen, I just, you like wine, it's free, and I put quality work. Once I set them up, they're good to go, you know, but has it been a hassle to you? Are you, are you a gardener naturally, or has it been a hassle to you? Yeah, I like, I like growing food. Okay. And uh, has it been natural gardening? Is that a natural thing that you, uh, part of your family, or is it a task or something? No, I think it comes naturally to me because I like uh, good, healthy food. Okay. So how does the torpedo pot, how does it feed into that for you? For me, it helps me because I don't have to be out here with a big um, tiller or a tractor or an aerator. Okay. You know, pretty much 
I barely need this. I really just <laughs> use my, my hands with, with gloves. And, um, you know, I sit and I, I, I do this and I take my, my plant out of here. And, uh, hold it, honey, what's that first? That's the chamomile. This is chamomile. Yeah, yeah. This is chamomile. Tell them what, how, what's that like? What is that like? Chamomile, we, last summer, we were able to um, have chamomile tea all all summer, into the into the early fall, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And this, considering it was so fresh, the tea was so hearty. It yeah. was so, and chamomile is a calming yeah. um, flower. So when you put it in your tea and you drink it like oh right before gosh. bed, yeah. you, you have such I a peaceful, peaceful now, rest. I missed my chamomile. Now, see the chamomile fell off. Didn't want to see the fell off. It took our chamomile. The chamomile. Yeah, we sit down to the West Philadelphia Garden. Oh, they they ate it all. They, so the yeah. city of Philadelphia came down, and this is Mrs. Blackwell came down, and she and her team, and you know we love them. We fed them. You know we feel very close to them. And Trudy Haynes came down, the old commentator from TV. And she uh, took a look at the garden and what we were doing. And uh, Mrs. Blackwell said, I want all these pots in my West Philadelphia garden. And we brought them down there. Never moved them before. It was a challenge, wasn't it? Yes. But you have pictures. But they, they enjoyed it. Uh, the people really in the there. community were able to eat. Some yeah. of the people who were um, on the street or yeah. homeless, yeah. they were able to come by and take advantage of the things that we were growing down there. Right. And uh, in, in Southwest Philadelphia, and they really um, appreciated the pro the project that we had. That and I want to cut you off because I know you're gonna put that in there. But while I was putting together some pots down there, there were two homeless men that walked by, and uh, it was it was disturbing. You know what I mean? Because they're young, 25, you know, 20, no jobs, and so they came by and they saw the watermelon. They said, uh, they said I said, would you like to have some watermelon? They said, yeah. They took a water on and went up the street. And I, I didn't know what happened after that, but you drove around, right? You mm -hmm. drove in that area. Yeah, I was yeah, coming yeah, to the yeah, area. And yeah. I saw them, and they had you know, the watermelon in their hand. And I didn't know where they had gotten it from. But, <laughs> but in the back of my mind, I was like, they probably got it from the garden that we set up. Right, right. right. And they, yeah. they did. So that pot so. grew. We had the small melons that were grown. And they were called the small, what do they call them? Uh, Sugar babies. The sugar babies regrew about 30 sugar babies in the front of the house in one of these. And for the big melons, the cantaloupes, which are about like this, I must we must have got about 20 of them. 15 yeah. of them or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, along that line. So we expect the pasta. So, okay, back to your camel mill. I'm so sorry, man. That just dragged us off. And, and one thing uh, before I forget to mention the melons like, like the mounds that this forms. Um, and when you put your melons in, you can kind of, you know, make a mound for it to sit, a lot of dirt around it. And they like that because it keeps it, it keeps their roots moist. And they do really well in these open, um, open series uh, pots. And these are the pots that um, don't have the torpedo in the middle of them. Right. So we call these open series, curves, Sharon, open curve series. I know we should cut it off and go back to this, but see how dry this is at the top? And that's the technology. It's not trying to pull water out of your pot to water areas that are not being used by your plants. So as you probe a little bit down, you'll find that it is moist and it has been watering, okay? So you turn to give the plants the exact water it needs to grow what you want. So with the, with the uh, plants, pretty much you're just digging a hole and some, like I said, sometimes I use the trowel. Most of the time, I just use my hands because I can. I feel like I have a little more control. And you just dig a hole, like I'm doing. You dig a hole, and you put your plant in the hole, and then you cover it back up like that. And torpedo pot. Does the rest. Does the rest. <laughs> you do this, you take your gloves off. It does the rest. You cut on your water. Wow. And you walk away. You don't come back until it's time to eat. You, you don't do anything else until it's time to eat. And that's the beauty 
And the lovely part that I like about Torpedo Pot is you're constantly getting water and it's all fresh water. You're not getting um, some of the uh, self-watering planters. You just get reused water. And it, and water sits in the bottom, right. Right. or it's a, um, a bottle of water that sits in it that yeah. is just water that's been sitting. And sometimes yeah. algae grows in the water, yeah. and yeah. it just feeds yeah. your your plant. Yeah. But um, this gets, gives your plants fresh water. I know and, if and you, you gave me water, I would want fresh water. And that's what these plants get. Uh, you mentioned something really important, and that's the problems that we have with drip irrigation, especially with hydroponics. Uh, I, I'm a hydroponic believer in some things, so I certainly don't want to talk about the industry. But anything that you have to put nutrition into to get nutrition back out, it doesn't sit well with me. And if you have a lot of bacteria because that system cuts down, you have to re-clean that whole system back out. It's just, it's too costly. The system's too costly. Move towards the torpedo pot. You'll and see you're how, sitting in the same water. Same water. And it's over. Same circulating water over and over yes. again. And it stresses the plant out. And one good thing about um, dealing with food grown in your torpedo, torpedo pot, mm. you will be able to tell the difference between greens grown in a torpedo pot with fresh water in the That's system amazing. versus greens grown in uh, hydroponics. That's you amazing. You will be able to tell the difference because you're used to eating fresh water, freshly grown yeah. um, herbs, vegetables, and um, fruit. And yeah. unfortunately, you, your body it gets used to that, get used, gets used to that nutrition, yeah. and you can tell a hydroponically grown um, fruit, vegetable, lettuce, right, right. pretty instant because you just, yeah. you're just used to this. And, and the reason why, if you don't mind, the scientific, I like to step in and just say a little stupid scientific thought here, but one of the reasons why is because the fungus. Don't use fertilizers, they make your food tasteless. You have to let the fungus do its job and you will enjoy your food and it will benefit you. Let what? your food, let your plants go and get its food, bring it back up and build the systems up correctly. Don't give it fertilizer to only build up the things you see, not the things you can't see. Okay. And this system is, is so easy, mm. a person in a wheelchair mm. could set up a torpedo pot and get the harvest and plant the plants because it is just so easy. And we're saying that because we're thinking about moving into retirement homes and setting those things up. Yes. Um, mm. So a lot of people are interested in, in partnering with us and I wanted to do this video to let you know why you should also consider partnering with us here at Torpedo Pot. So we wish you and your family a wonderful Palm Sunday weekend and join us again for another short video um, at the home of Torpedo Pot. So from Sharon and Daryl Addison, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much guys.